Hi everyone, how's it going? Jimmy here and this is part 10 of my course on building Electron apps using JavaScript. And today I want to talk about setting up auto updates for your complete application that already packaged, you know, and prepared for updating basically. If you watched my live stream, you know that I've spent some time figuring out how to do that um, for one simple reason. Uh, back when I was writing an Electron apps, or rather at that time it was still Atom Shell and Node WebKit, that is now NW.js, uh, there was no auto update modules or anything like that. So I basically had to code it myself. Well, luckily for me and I guess for everyone working uh, on Electron, it's now a great package called Electron Builder that is complete solution to building and distributing your Electron app that includes auto update support out of the box for a variety of um, deployment endpoints, I guess. So in this case, I've used the um, uh, GitHub releases. Uh, if you go to the uh, BBGS Electron repository now, you'll see that there are releases uh, that now include binaries that are compiled and along with some uh, JSON YAML files that I will talk ab um, about in a second. So the way it works is actually quite simple. All I did is I removed the Electron packager that we used before and I've added this Electron builder um, here uh, and created a three additional um, scripts, right? So first one is electron builder minus dir. This will actually just generate an archive with all your source code so you can actually check, you know, if that's what you expect to see. Um, dist, which will build the distribution binary that again uh, is going to appear in this dist folder and you can actually have a look at it, test it locally and so on and so forth. And then there's a GH publish target that is actually has this minus P always, which is uh, which triggers publishing. So this will use the version in your package JSON and or a git tag that you have. So if I go here and um, open my log, you will see that all the releases that I pushed actually tagged. So I did not tag it. Uh, this was made by the uh, electron builder itself. Uh, basically just, you know, keep that in mind. Um, and then the second part, so this is the building part, right? We replace the building tool. The second part is the auto updater part. So there is a package electron updater, which is a sub package of uh, electron builder. And the way it works is that basically you just follow tutorial uh, from the guys. They have a pretty nice um, documentation. I mean, there are some things here and they're lacking that you have to maybe search for, but you know, most of the things that you have to know are here and it's quite easy to follow. So uh, I've set up the auto update in our index.js. You can see here is our um, auto updates part. So here's we have a um, send status to window that I'll talk a bit uh, about a bit later. And then there's we have this auto updater uh, instance that is got from uh, electron updater. And what I do is I listen for the events, like checking for update, update available, not available, error, download progress, download it. And uh, basically, I guess that could have been actually one, uh, one callback because we only really need two callbacks to do one thing. Um, and uh, yeah, once update is downloaded, you just quit it and install it. I mean, you can do delay, whatever you want. I thought that, you know, for demo purposes, this is enough. Now we have this status, uh, send status to window function. Uh, the purpose is to see actually the message, right? So this uses the web contents um, uh, channels to send the message to the window so that we can actually display it. In this case, I use this IPC renderer to listen for the message and all I do is just console log it so that we can actually, you know, in the console see what the hell is going on. You do need to give your users some feedback that update is ready, update, update is available, update is downloading. In this case, I just use console log, but you know, you can use uh, dialog windows, whatever you want. And that's actually all you need to set it up. So this is as easy as this. I mean, you don't even need to listen to all of those updates, right? This is the most important one. You just listen when it says, okay, update downloaded and that's it. Now, the way it works is uh, it basically relies on this uh, latest Mac, well, latest minus platform dot yaml which is attached to your release so if you don't have those uh, latest files it will fail and this is i encountered this uh, in the beginning where i only said i want to build dmg and you know as you can see there's no latest yaml files here so it failed and i was like why why is it what's going on well uh, this is something that is mentioned in the docs but if you're going to build for mac you do need to specify uh zip format as well. So you can see here version three already has zip and DMG and then it generates this YAML file because zip is used for updates. Um, 
Another caveat is that if you want to set up auto updates for Mac properly, you actually will want to have a code signing certificate. Um, I do not have one. So basically, whenever you try to, um, if you try to download this one and update this one, it will tell you, hey, I cannot really update it because the new binaries are not signed. So I don't trust them. This is a Mac thing. And if you want to have a code signing, I believe you need to pay for them. At least this was the case a couple of years ago. Maybe there's some way to self sign, but I did not develop into it. I mean, they do have, um, they do have a signing part here. Wait a second. Where was it? Um, Vicky, they did have, okay. They now have a website. Okay. The, ah, code signing. Yeah, there you go. So, um, code signing for windows two certificates and where to buy certificates. Yeah. So, okay. So you have to buy them for both windows and Mac actually. So there you go. Uh, but for Windows, it's not mandatory as far as I know. Windows don't really care much about uh, signed apps. I mean, obviously, it's better when they are signed and everything. But Mac outright just blocks um, auto updates from unsigned software. I guess you can probably turn it off somehow, but I didn't dwell into it. So, you know, it's like if, if that's something interesting to you, you probably can find it in the docs for Electron Builder. Um, that's actually about it. It was pretty straightforward once I figured out everything uh, that was required. Um, not much problems here. I had to move one more thing. Yes, I had to move. So we have our um, build method, right, which rolls up our app using rollup. So I had to move it from uh, dist app min.js to source app min.js because dist folder is ignored by uh, Electron Builder simply because it uses it as destination by default. So, you know, it doesn't package itself. It basically ignores whatever is there. So I had to move it. And that's it. So this is, you know, once you set this up, if you have auto updates for your app, um, if you, by the way, if you have any tips for uh, code signing and package, uh, like auto updating without code signing, do let me know in the comments because this is an interesting topic and I don't really you know, want to explore, spend much time to explore it right now. Uh, but if you can share some cool links, that would be really great. Um, yeah, and that's it. So the plan is next, I will put up a video probably closer to the end of the week with a list of topics and projects for the next course that I, I want to make. And I will put in a poll that you will be able to have a look at and say, you know, I am interested in this, this and this. So it's going to be like a multi choice poll, say two or three courses out of uh, seven, I think I have right now. Uh, so you guys going to help me pick uh, something interesting for me and for you right so we're gonna do some some fun stuff so stay tuned thank you for watching i hope you found this course useful and as always i see you next time bye